Well, it was all run down, you know, that buildings were deteriorating and everything. So something had to be done. But remains to be seen. I mean, nobody can say what's going to happen, but everybody hopes for the best. I wanted to do a redevelopment project. An awful lot of people have come to us and said, boy, you're crazy to come in here. You, you, what are you, you, you think you can turn this thing around? This has been dead for 50 years, or it was in the process of dying for 50 years. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be in South Norwalk. I wanted to make this happen. And I, I sort of gripped my teeth and tried to make it happen. ashamed to be in South Norwalk anymore, which is the most pleasant feeling you can really have. Uh, I, I verged on that. I verged on being almost ashamed to admit that People that's where we are. People just thought we were stupid. <laughs> yeah, me that the need for all people would be preserved and also the revitalization definitely would do a lot for the tax basis in the city of Norwalk. It'll probably help the hotel and every, everybody around here. There's a lot of people that don't have a place to live. Well, we've sold all the condominiums. We had 110 residential condominiums, and we've sold all of those. And we've sold them to, prior to having completed construction. We really sold them off the plant. So it's, it's been very, very successful in terms of the sales. I was immediately attracted to the, the historical buildings. Uh, I was also very impressed with the development they had done in terms of the finishing of the buildings inside, the conveniences of modern life, uh, and it was close to work. And there were like three towns we went to, and we went past here, fell in love with it. It's like a, a loft-type bedroom, which was really neat, so we really so that was wonderful, and so we have to take this now. They all want to get ahead. That's why they moved here. Every one of them are all business people. And they most all come from someplace else. Three trucks moved here. M-A-Y-E-R was on the truck. And somebody else moved here from Illinois. There's another party moved here from New Mexico and uh, New York. There's a lot of valid people moving in here. Well, the first time I came here, I guess what I saw was in my mind's eye what the street could be. The things I remember most are, I guess, the bricked sidewalks and the fake gas lamps. And I found a realtor uh, in Westport a lady who works for Cross and Brown, who took me around to about five or six nice locations on Route 7 and Route 1, and they were all very suitable. And you know, and then she said, look, you know, I have this thing. It's like, I don't know if it's going to like it, but it's a long shot. Let's take a look. We got to that corner, and I saw the street lamps, and I fell in love with it. And we passed this, we just drove right by here, and I looked at the store, and I said, there's my store. It's great to be here. I mean, people 
walk in and they're just astounded to see what's gone on because this used to be a place where they were afraid to walk you know and now it's got a huge parking lot in the back it's got um, street parking it's safe to walk here um, we have policemen patrolling and the whole neighborhood has changed really they also love the caliber of the things that you can find here to buy you know they're things that you can't necessarily find any place else very special things that are destined to become collector's items. Now they've got a lot of craft shops and different things that well, I don't think everybody would go to those shops. You know? It's, it's nice to make no, to revitalize self, no, but not at the expense of poor people. And uh, the revitalization should have came along with the, with the idea of helping poor people, too. And, and it could have been done in a nice way. But this way, it was just eased out. You looked, and they were there. And then the next time you looked, they were all gone. The whites left the inner city and went out in the suburbs. Now they decide they don't want to stay there and they want to come back. So where are we supposed to go? You know, this is this is the whole ball game, and it's not only happening here and all. You pick up the paper and the magazines and things, look at the television. It's happening all over the country. The inner city was left to the poor people, and now they want to come back. And where does the inner city people go? This is the question. You you going to have a pied piper and lead us all out to the water and drown us? That's the only thing that I can see. I lived there eight years. I loved it there. The apartment was very comfortable. Not in good condition. But on the floor, I had seven rooms. They told me to move. They ordered me to move. They gave me three months to look. But it's very difficult. I talk to the landlords. They think if you have five kids, the house. I have to tell them this is not true, that they should talk to the housing department. They know me, and they'll help me. They know how I live and how I am with my kids. But now the landlords don't consider this. They think that if you have five kids, no. The apartment is closed. They say no. Why? I can't they, find the well, million. We could not I live there. You, she was and they threw me. That's right. I used to leave. And we didn't I was there 31 we years. We would have been sat on the side. We, we didn't have, and you know, we they made told. us pay until we left. We weren't That's supposed what we to were do told. that. We had to get out. There was no help they, they had people ready to put our stuff on. And I yeah. lost over $3,000 worth left. of antique furniture I had. Because I had to sell it. I couldn't keep it. Oh, I sold everything I had. Well, I was, was a 138, me, I was 138. Up she were too. Upstairs, over and down. I also lived on the other side over there, you know, in the uh, other building right where... Um, That's right. All the antique. I lived there about 14 years or something. Washington Street is my whole life. I, I've lived there. That's right. She she since I was very, people. very young. My husband, so you my husband died there. I want to show you something else. This should, it shouldn't be able to take this and pull it off like that. It's rotten. I think everybody, all of the people that lived here, worked here, the businesses that were around, um, the families that lived here, wanted that change. They, they um, wanted to be a part of, of developing this area, and they wanted to be included. Uh, however, the reality of the situation is that you know, the housing is, is completely out of reach. Um, you know, the provisions that were made for some of the families to return um, were, are basically being overlooked. And, you know, there's been no effort to help any of those families sort of um, benefit from uh, the windfall of, 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 you know, what's happening now. And in terms of my own situation, uh, luckily, being uh, one of the people that, uh, you know, have been here for 
you know, relatively extended period of time, um, we've been able to, to weather that storm. But, you know, the basic, the average person was not able to do that. They don't want the poor people in this town here. I don't know why. They gotta live too. You know? But you can't, they can't pay these rents. What are they gonna do? That's the main thing. What are they gonna do? We said that we bust make a self-supporting uh, affair out of this neighborhood. And therefore, we, we, we had to get the white-collar worker because the white-collar worker, middle management, who was coming into Fairfield County and didn't have a place to live, and couldn't afford the big, the big houses and so forth, and the Darians and Greenwiches of the world, but they could certainly afford an OWAC. Those are the ones we were going for, and they don't qualify for for moderate and low income housing. And also, I, f I think, I think it's true, that you cannot mix low and moderate income housing with, with the type of housing, the type of people who live here, who are self-supporting. You know, the, the expression that the development uh, company uses in, in uh, their, their um, commercial hype and their advertising hype has been the rebirth. And they're absolutely right because they murdered the old neighborhood. <laughs> and right now, right now they're trying to resurrect it. The whole area has an, its own neighborhood kind of a feel, and people get very, very excited about it. Want to be, want to participate in it, either as a resident or as an investor, or and be part of a, an exciting concept. Shame to kill himself in Norwalk. My whole family was born in Norwalk. And you go up Norwalk to get a pair of shoes, you gotta go up Norwalk or go to Bridgeport or Stamford someplace. And when my whole family was raised here in Norwalk. Yep. Very typical uh, <laughs> attitude. Very typical. And uh, there really would be delightful to be able to put a mix, but maybe it just won't fly. I don't know. I almost feel as though I don't belong here anymore. Now, isn't that ridiculous? Let's go up. When I first came down here, there was a very small group of artists. At that time, there was a tremendous potential for the working artists. Eight years have gone, nine years. Do I like what I see? Um, To be perfectly honest, no. Um, but then that is my viewpoint. I expected the neighborhood to be renovated and still keep a mix in the neighborhood. And when I say mix, I'm speaking uh, 
economically, racially, and so on. I think I was thinking more of a New York neighborhood, and I have since learned that that's almost impossible in suburbia. When they come in and start with their restoration, that means the neighborhood changes completely. During the time that between when this, this lease will be up, which will be in about a week and a half, and when I will move out, during that time I will look around South Norwalk more. But I have been looking and do not find uh, things available at the prices that, that we certainly have originally known and definitely enjoyed here. But what feels as though it's happening in this area is a very insensitive thing of suddenly just very quickly, somebody pushing one to the side saying, a big or brother coming in saying, move to the side, I'm taking over, you know, move. My responsibility to this project is to be successful. I'm not sure where anyone that might be displaced by the future growth of and success of this project uh, might go within this community because I, I frankly have not been in this community or involved in the community long enough to know all the various neighborhoods which might uh, have room or, or be of the ambiance and the nature that these people would find desirable. Festivities is a center for those who like to entertain, cook, and live with spirited style. We specialize in fine food catering. We also offer takeout. We have a wonderful selection of tabletop, which we, we also offer uh, wonderful gift, gift wrapping and ribbons and you know wonderful things for the boat. And as you can see here on the shelves, we offer a full array of gourmet retail for those of you or those of us who like to dabble in the kitchen. I would hate to think that this would become an armed camp and that we would have gates uh, uh, at either end of the street. Uh, I try to take an attitude of being friendly. There's an implicit, uh, there's an impli implicit difference between the, uh, the locals and here. It's very difficult to bridge. Uh, but to uh, show openness, not to show disdain for the locals because their lifestyle is different from my own. Uh, and to show uh, help if it's needed. If someone is, if a bagman is panhandling on the street, then it's my obligation to uh, uh, be generous. Well, Norwalk is a very mixed town, and I don't like it when any section of the town becomes uh, totally monolithic. I think part of the genius of our city is the diversity, and particularly in this section, this area of South Norwalk, I would be happier if it were not just the young urban professional type of neighborhood. It's, uh, it has a lot of surrounding sections where we have people at different income levels, and I'd like to have them more integrated. So I'm somewhat disappointed in that outcome. I know for a fact in any development, there could be at least 15% of those units set aside for low-income and minority people, and would not, and it would not have an adverse effect on the general community. I think what would have a more adverse effect on the general community, when you uproot people, move them out, and don't give them no decent place to live, and bringing in new people from out of town all over, and they're taking the housing stock that we presently, has presently exist in the city of Norwalk. I represented several clients who were residents of the mercantile building located on South Main Street. They were living under less than desirable conditions, paying their rent regularly because they, it was a place they could afford, and they realized that um, housing in Norwalk is so sh tight for low-income people that they really didn't have a lot of other choices. They have roots here. They, they, they all work in Norwalk with uh, well-known companies, and we're very concerned. They wanted 
to remain in the neighborhood and they wanted their apartments. When the temperature went down, it was so cold. I didn't know the pipe was, you know, the, the heater was broke. I had my little baby with me. And he was, you know, he was trembling. And we put it in the middle of the bed. We had it for the, for the living room, from the bedroom set. We had it moved to the living room. Cause it was so cold in that room that we could not sleep in there. Apparently, the pipes burst because windows were left open on the coldest day of the year in rooms where there was work going on and the doors were locked. What this meant was that because it was an immediate danger to the remaining residents, they had to relocate immediately. Whether it was an employee who forgot to close a window or an employee who was told to forget to close a window, we will never know. All we know is that Han Collins is a professional builder. And generally, it's known uh, among the public that if pipes are allowed to get cold enough, they will freeze and burst. People were quoted in the newspaper as saying this could not have been an accident. By the law, he's got to give me time to move. He just cannot throw me out just like that because he got money. It's a United States. I'm a United States citizen. You're going to have higher income people living in lower quality apartments. And the lower income people who can't compete aren't going to have any place to live. They try to make a better life, you know, to help people. They should make, make some house, some house that people can afford it. We are people. You know, we're not animal, we're a person. We, you know, we deserve to live in here just like he do. Just because he got money, I don't got money. That don't make me different. a little more heart and a little less thoughts about money, I think more people would have somewhere to stay. That's my thought. Because if I was a mayor, you know, as long as my people were housed and could make it, I would try to make more jobs or something like that. But I, would, I wouldn't think of so much money. I would think of, you know, you replacing the people. Nice of course, you got to have a certain amount of money, even a preacher. Everybody has to have money to run something on, but I don't mean you got to just, you know, try to make it all and, and disregard a person, another per human being. If we knew five years ago what we know today, namely that the project was going to be so successful, then we would have been able to plan into it, uh, probably setting aside a certain number of units or a certain number of buildings specifically designated for Section 8 or some other form of subsidy. But of course, those are things you never know at the time. And to have put that requirement in then would have meant there wouldn't be any project because no developer would have taken it up. Now it's so successful that if by some fluke, one of these buildings should fall into our hands. Let's say the guy didn't pay his taxes and no bank bailed them out or something. And, and miraculously, a build, one of these buildings should fall into our hands became a city building, I feel confident that we could make it a, uh, a low-income housing place 
put low-income families in there and the project would just keep going and we would have cheek by jowl widely varying income levels but that's because it's already successful to try to do that before it's successful would have meant that the developer wouldn't take it up I guess there's no great answer to this issue well, wouldn't one answer be to try to reflect the community, the greater community of Norwalk and South Norwalk in this development? I d don't know. I guess we tried to do that. for thinking they I don't kicked think us Brent away is. from that. When they cleaned it up, they didn't want any blacks or Spanish or whatever there. That's, that's the only I reason really I can think see. Well, I, I just think they well, want, to, my want to make more you money or something. More you know? money, they can't make no more Call than what they Seaport, It's going to be the same old South Norm, you can believe it or not. My clients are doubled up, tripled up, living in cars, paying $400 a month, $500 a month for apartments with no heat. People are paying astronomical amounts of money for low quality materials, for low quality services, for terrible, terrible conditions. has been an incredible success story. I think what's happened here has been incredibly positive for, for Norwalk and for the people that are here and for the people that were here. gotta accept a little blame in this here. I don't think any of us can uh, say we're blameless.